representation. It's called fun. So we still for is a representation of sacred theme. It is a satirical, grotesque key. These mysteries were performed in the street and the piazzas throughout Europe by the common street actor, also called the Jouleur, the Jongleur, the Buffoons. That is why these performances were called Jouleurate. So here we go. With the first Jouleurate to know, La Nage de la Jouleurate, the birth of the Jongleur. Gadra, people, gadra! The jungler is here! The jungler is here! I am the jungler! I am a giraffe, I am a pirouette! Make it off! I make fun of those in Yes! Those big buffoons! Those inflated balloons! Who go around making wars! In which we are the ones who get slaughtered! I reveal them for what they are! I pull out their blood from their asses and they deflate. So gather round, kind of people, gather round. Because here is the place, and now is the time, where I begin to clown for you. And I'll teach you a new way of living. See this time? Sharp, like a knife. Remember that. Tell you how it was that I came to be. Yes, because I was not born a jongleur. No, I didn't come from a big castle of the sky. Hopla, good job, good evening, good evening. Hello, sono giullare. No, I am the result of a miracle. Yes, a real miracle that was performed on me. This is how I came to be. I was born a peasant. Yes, a real peasant, a real countryman. Un uomo della terra, un vero contadino. And I was happy, and I was sad. I was sad because I had no land. I had nothing. So I worked in this valley wherever I could for other bosses. Anyway, one day, when I was coming home from work, I came by a big mountain on a rock. So I asked a fellow peasant, I said, whose is this mountain? He says, it's nobody's. Nobody wants it, it's worth nothing. It's all lava that was burnt out from a volcano. They call it La Cagata del Diavolo, the <laughs> devil's stuff. I said, oh, Bella, the devil's ass must have really hurt letting out such a big dump. <laughs> anyway. I asked the priest, I asked the lawyer, they all told me it was nobody's. So one day, I went up to its peak, and I saw that there was a little bit of water, and a trickle, and a little bit of earth, and a trickle of water coming down. So I rolled up my sleeves, and with the help of my wife and my children, we went up to the mountain, and we started working the earth. And then, following the moon, and the sun, and just the right amount of rain. And pfft, grass started to grow. And trees, boom, 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 boom. And fruits and vegetables. It was a paradise. Oh, we were all so happy. Me, my children, my wife. My wife, come era bella. She was so beautiful. With two round breasts, sweet fair skin, and that gentle way of walking that reminds you of an effort. And her voice so delicate. La la la, la la la, la la la. She used to sing. Oh well. So, after a while, we were all so happy. And all the other peasants started getting jealous. So they would pass by. They would take a good look at my mountain. And they would say, Oh, look what you're able to bring forth from such a pile of rock. Hmm. And one 
day, the Lord of the Valley came by. He turned off his telephone. <laughs> and he says, oh, Where did all this spring up from? Whose land is this? I said, It's mine. I built it up myself, piece by piece. Oh, how come it's yours? It's mine. I said, No, it's not yours, sir, because I asked everybody. I asked the Lord. I asked the priest, I asked the lawyer, I asked all the other peasants. They told me it was nobody's. Nobody's? That word is a word that does not exist. It's mine and you have to give it to me. No, 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 sir, I cannot give it to you. Because then me, I have to go work for other people. And I don't want to do that. Because then they can get, get richer and I get hunchback. Well, it's mine and you have to give it to me. I'll pay you. I don't want your money, sir, because I don't want to go and work for other bosses. Well, it is mine and you have to give it to me. No, no, and no. He laughed, ha, 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 and went away. And the day after, the priest came. Oh, Jacquino, be sensible. Be a good Christian. You know that God punishes people who steal. The Lord of the Valley is a very evil and powerful Lord. You must give it back to him. And I said, but I didn't steal. And I made a rude gesture to him. And he went away. <laughs> then the day after that, the lawyer came. Ah, oh, Cecchino, you know, the land belongs to the Lord of the Valley. He's a very powerful and evil lord. It's written on paper. You have to give it back to him. And I said, ma va fa. And I made a rude gesture to him. And he went away. <coughs> but the Lord of the Valley didn't give up. No. One day, he came back while my wife and my children were all happy playing in the field with his soldiers on their horses, smiling and laughing. <coughs> he got down from his horse. He went over to my wife. He grabbed her, threw her on the ground, ripped her skirt, pulled down his pants, and mounted her like she were a cat. I tried to move, but the soldiers held me back. Then I managed to free myself, and I picked up a shovel, and I screamed, You bastards! No! No! My wife said, Don't do it. That's exactly what they want. They want to kill you, and take away your land. We are peasant. We don't need no honor. Honor is for the rich and the nobles. Our honor is our land. It is worth more than everything more than your honor or mine. So we just stood there, watching me with my children. Then the Lord of the Valley went back on his horse and left, all happy and satisfied. Oh, we wept, how we wept. We couldn't even look at each other in the eyes anymore. And then, when we went to the village, they wouldn't even let us into church. No? And people would throw stones at us and they would scream, Animale, porco, vigliacco, you're an animal, an ox. The Lord of the Valley mounted your wife and you just stood there watching. You have no honor, all for a piece of land. And to my wife, Puttana, vacca, troia, you're a whore, a cow. And throwing all these stones at us. So one day, my wife ran off. I never saw her again. And then my children stopped eating. So they all died one by one. I was left all alone with this land. I didn't know what to do anymore. So one day, I decided I was going to end it all. I picked up her. And I decided I was going to hang myself. I was about to hang myself. When I felt on my left shoulder a hand, I turn around, and there is a fellow with big blue shiny eyes who says to me, My friend, could you please give me something to drink? I said, but do you think this is the time to ask somebody for something to drink when he's about to kill himself? You have no manners. 
<laughs> but then I looked at him, and he really looked like a poor wretch. So I said, Vabe, I'll give you something to drink now, and I'll kill myself later. <laughs> <laughs> so then, I gave him something to drink, and I said there were two other fellows with him, who also had faces full of sufferings, and I said, you know, more than something to drink, you need something to eat. So I gave them some beans and some bread, and they started eating and eating, and how much they were eating. And when they were done eating, the fellow with the big blue shiny eyes says to me, my friend, I know what you want to do what you're about to do. But if I were you, I wouldn't do it. Do you know who I am? I said, no, but I have an idea why be Jesus Christ. <laughs> well done, you've guessed correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and these are St. Peter and St. Paul. <laughs> well, nice to meet you. Cecchino. <laughs> Francesco. Francesco. Cecco. Cecchino. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have given me something to drink and something to eat, and I will give you something to say. Something to say? I say, what is this something to say? Well, you're a nice fellow, and it is right that you hold on to your land. It is right that you don't want to work for other bosses. <clears throat> you're only missing something here and here. You should not be stuck to your land. You should go around the country and help others understand the ones that, like you had nothing with the sharpness of your tongue and with laughter. Because only with the sharpness of your tongue you can deflate these inflated balloons. Yes, Jesus, but you see, I'm a peasant, I'm ignorant, I'm uneducated, my tongue does not budge, my brain is all burnt by the sun. You know, I am a little peasant. Don't worry. I am Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I came to give you the power of speech. I'm going to kiss you. And you will see a miracle. <clears throat> so, he took my face in his two hands. Mm. And he kissed me on the mouth <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> My tongue began to move inside my mouth, and my wheels began turning with a mind of their own. And my legs began to move at my feet, and I ran out of the street and the piazza, and I started screaming, Gather round, gang people, gather round! The jongleur is here, the jongleur is here! I'm going to joust with the Lord of the Valley, for he's a big balloon! And I'm going to deflate with the sharpness of the tongue. Yes, because it's not God the one who steals, no! But all those noble, those lords, those bishops, and only with laughter and with the sharpness of the tongue, that these balloons will be crushed! Yeah. 
about a very strange encounter I had the other night while I was in this tavern playing cards with a couple of wretched fools who were trying to fool me, the fool. Anyway, I was winning this game of cards because I had beautiful cards. And I was distracted by Sylvia, the lady of the tavern, because she was bringing a big basin of hot water to the Twelve Apostles. You know those fellows that go around following the Nazareth? They were in the other room, and they were going to wash their feet before having dinner. I said, interesting. They must be even crazy than me. <laughs> so, I'm going to win this game of cards, and with the money that I'm going to win, I am going to go and join them. So, let's play, wretched fruits. I put down the Wheel of Fortune. He puts down the Moon. He puts down the Tower. I put down the Fool. He puts down the Judgment. I put down Justice. He puts down Strength. And he says, you lost, fool. I have no more cards. I said, that's impossible. Because I had the card of death. I knew I had it. I knew I had it. There you are. At that moment, my players ran off. And a cold air filled the room. Madame, are you looking for somebody? Well, since my players ran off, I was going to go. Uh, if you're looking for the lady of the tavern, she's in the other room. She brought the water for the apostles. They're washing their feet before having dinner. Um, excuse me. Uh, would you like to go? Join them, please. Feel free. No, thank you. I'd rather wait here. <laughs> Good evening, madame. Yes, uh, if you want to sit down, please. Uh, the seat is still warm. I warm it up myself. Uh, I am under the impression that we met somewhere before, haven't we? That is impossible. <laughs> because uh, for people who meet me, only meet me once. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I think it was once now that I think. <laughs> but uh, I hope you don't mind me saying this, madame. Uh, compared to the last time that we met, you look uh, a little bit down the dumps. You look a little bit pale. <laughs> Pallo is my natural color. <laughs> I have been pale all my life. Ah, naturally pale, huh? <laughs> Interesting. That you remind me of. You are the speaking image of the playing card. True. I am death. Sono la morte. Ah, death. Well, <laughs> what a coincidence. Well, very nice to meet you. I am Matazone the Fool. <laughs> but, um... Uh, Excuse me, madame. Aren't you afraid? Me? Afraid? No, because everyone knows that the fool goes around looking for death. Because, like in the tarot card, il matto non c'ha paura della morte. On the contrary, because together they can win any other card, including the card of love. Well. If you're not afraid, how come that your leg is trembling? <laughs> ah, my leg. You see, because uh, this is not my real leg. No, I lost my leg in the battlefield. So I picked up this one from a captain who had been killed, but his leg was still moving alive, moving like a freshly killed lizard. So 
I can't even I put in place of my own such state. Come on, you Captain Land, you shouldn't be afraid of such a, an illustrious and noble Madonna. Behave yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, that is very kind of you to call me an illustrious Madonna. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you are very illustrious and very nice too. And I'm glad that you came looking for me because uh, I like you. And uh, I would like to buy you a drink. Oh, thank you. I would like a glass of wine. <laughs> Did you say that you like me? <laughs> oh, yes, I do. I like uh, everything about you. I like uh, the paleness of your skin. Hmm. Because where I come from, we have a saying. A woman with the skin, the color of whitewash, is a woman who never dies to make love. <laughs> I like your scent of chrysanthemums. And plus, to me, you're a queen. But you're a different kind of queen. Because uh, you don't go around announcing your arrival with trumpets and drums. You're always so discreet. <laughs> anyway, let me give you something to drink, my pale queen. Here. <laughs> drink this wine. He will give you a little bit of color. <laughs> <laughs> this wine is good. <laughs> oh, yes, how can it not be good? It's the same wine that the fellow over there is drinking, the Nazarene Jesus, and he knows about wine that one. Oh, he's a connoisseur. <laughs> Jesus, which one is he? <coughs> well, he's the one in the middle, with the big blue shiny eyes. Oh, he seems so sweet. He seems like such a nice fellow. You're not thinking of leaving me here and going to join them now, are you? <laughs> because that would make me very sad. I would burst into tears. Oh, my dear fool, I would love to remain in your company and take you away with me. But unfortunately, I... Ah, so you came for Jesus, so you didn't come for me. Oh, what a fool. And I thought that I... But anyway, it was very nice to meet you, madame. And I'm really glad I really enjoyed our conversation. <laughs> oh, you are a liar. Well, you're an imposture. You only pretended to like me out of your fear of me. Out of your fear of death, la tua paura de la morte. No, 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 my pale lady. I simply like you, and I'm really glad that you stay here with me, just because you find me a pleasant fellow. But what are those tears in your eyes? Did I offend you? No, you did not offend me, my fool. You've only softened my heart. I am crying because of Jesus. He is the one that I'm supposed to take away to die. Ah, so you did come for Jesus. And uh, what kind of <coughs> disease is going to take him away? A brain disease, a heart disease, a stomach disease? No. The cross. The cross. Well, let me go and warn him for this terrible suffering so he can prepare himself. <laughs> there is no use. He knows it already. <laughs> He's known it for all his life, from the first day he was born. But then he must be really crazy to me. I mean, he knows he's going to die on the cross, and he's still sitting there drinking away and chatting and smiling. <laughs> How can he not be crazy? He who loves everyone, even the ones who are going to betray him, like Judas. Ah, it is Judas, then. Let me go and spit in his face. There is no use. You would have to spit in all their faces, because they are all going to betray him. Oh, everyone? Yes, everyone. <laughs> 
Please, fool, pour me another glass of wine and let me forget with all this sadness. I just want to get drunk. <laughs> oh, well, it's better to have happy death. <laughs> Here, my pale lady, drink, here. <laughs> Ladies, take off your cloak. Let me see those beautiful pale arms and those round apples. <laughs> more than anybody. But I said, what happened? What happened? I mean, there is the mother of the bride who's crying. The bride is pulling her hair. <laughs> the father of the bride is in the corner bending his head against the wall. <laughs> oh, the shame of it, the shame of it. I said, but please tell me what happened. Well, all the wine that was specifically prepared for the banquet has turned into vinegar. I had heard of a rain-dawn bride, lucky bride, sposa bagnata, sposa fortunata. <laughs> but a bride, rained on by vinegar, that will make her the worst kind of luck you want to stay away from. So, <laughs> at that moment, everybody was just around, cursing, stomping, and pacing. A nice fellow, right, accompanied by his mother, a very distinguished lady, his name was Jesus, also nicknamed the Son of God. 
and the mother. They used to call her the Signora Madonna. Yes, they were invited too. They were just a little late. When the Signora Madonna realized what was going on with this wine turning to vinegar, went over to her son and said, Jesus, my son, you who are so good to people, you who can make so many wonderful things for everybody, see if you can help these poor people out of this terrible mess they're in. As soon as La Signora Madonna spoke to her son Jesus, he kissed her on the nose, and a big smile spread on his face. One of those kind of smiles that if you're not careful, if you don't watch out, makes your naked fall off and whoop, you melt. Anyway, at that moment, Jesus opened up his arm and said, My friends, will I please have 12 buckets of fresh, clean water? And in a flash, 12 buckets of water were there. I moved in the back because the sight of all the water made me a little sick, you know? <laughs> and he started making this gesture, this sign, twirling his hands, snapping his fingers, bumbling words that only sound gods make. <laughs> Who was in the back? All sad and depressed. <laughs> and a little sick because of all that water. <laughs> a whiff with my nostril of that unmistakable aroma of freshly crushed grapes. <laughs> it was wine. Yes, real good wine. The kind of wine that goes down to your throat and rolls all the way down to your stomach, sits there for a little, then it rolls back up slowly, back in your throat, and open your nostrils and spread forth. And at that moment, Jesus started pouring wine for everybody and said, Bebete gente, e viva, drink now, enjoy yourself, don't save it for later. And everybody started drinking and we were all so happy. And then all the people were like, Jesus, bravo, you're divine. And the mother of the bride was all smiling, the bride was all dancing around, the groom was leaping about, the father of the bride was still in the corner begging, saying, guess what, because nobody told him. And the mother, the mother of Jesus was in the corner, all proud besides herself, to have such a clever son who can bring forth from water wine. But Jesus forgot the Madonna. So he went over to her and said, Oh, Mother, sorry, I forgot. Here, have a glass of wine. My son, I don't really drink. I'm not used to it. It makes my head spin and then I say silly things. <laughs> Mother, this is good wine. I made it myself. <laughs> Just make a little head. So la signora Madonna had a sip of wine. <laughs> and a big smile spread it on her face. So, can you believe that still today there are people around who say that wine is an invention of the devil and that is a sin to drink it? Mm. But do you really think that if wine was an invention of the devil, that Jesus, the Son of God, and La Madonna, he would have given it to his mother to drink? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because that Jesus, he had so much love for his mother that I don't even have for the old grappa in the world. <laughs> I believe that if God, the Father, would have taught from the very beginning to know instead of to Adam, instead of waiting to, to Noah to teach the crushing trick of making wine, that we will all be happy in paradise. Because when the snake came with the apple in his mouth and said to Adam, here, eat the apple. It's red, it's sweet, it's good. All Adam really needed 
was a big glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> we would have picked all the apple on earth, and we'd all be happy in paradise. That is the wretched sin, because fruit is not meant to be eaten. <laughs> it's meant to be crushed and trodden, because from crushed apples, you make good cider. <laughs> from rotten pears and berries and cherries, you make sweet, delicious grappa. And from crushed grapes, you make sweet, delicious wine. <laughs> In fact, I am very sure that for all the good and honest people on this earth, for them, heaven, paradise, is going to be a sea of infinite, sweet, delicious wine. <laughs> Enjoy, evviva, be merry! <laughs>